were being accused of intentionally breaching security, violating copyrights, violating individual privacy. Your best friend is suing you for $600 million. As for the charges, I believe I deserve some recognition from this board. I I'm sorry? Yes. I don't understand. Which part? Hi, I'm Nat, he's Matt, we've got your geek news right here. And this week we're taking a look at a film that earns its geek cred because it's the story of the rise of the modern geek billionaire, Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg. We're talking about The Social Network, and don't worry, David Fincher managed to make the story of a nerd coding software for six years of his life into an absolutely gripping drama. No, really, he did. I need you. I'm here for you. No, I need the algorithm used to rank chess players. Are you okay? We're ranking girls. You mean other students? Yeah. You think this is such a good idea? I need the algorithm. All right. I need the algorithm. Give each girl a base rating of 1400. At any given time, girl A has a rating RA and girl B has a rating RB. When any two girls are matched up, there's an expectation of which will win based on their current rating, right? Yeah. And those expectations are expressed this way. Let's write it. You've probably seen those posters everywhere with Jesse Eisenberg's profile pic covered with the words genius, punk, billionaire. Well, let me tell you, this movie weaves a character tale so complex, it'll leave you questioning Zuckerberg's true intentions long after you've left the theater. And those first three scenes are amazing. They perfectly set up Mark's natural tendencies as kind of a jackass, and then they give you the gorgeous setting of Harvard and follow it up with Mark's true genius as he programs Face Mash in a night while drunk and hungry for recognition. Mm -hmm. I really dug the way the story unfolded through legal depositions and flashbacks. The banter in those parts was just brilliant. I loved that the film was bookended with Mark's twisted love interest. Mm. Overall, the film just has amazing structure and it was just challenging enough to get your mind moving and keep you on your toes. And the performances, my god. Jesse Eisenberg was chilling and brilliant and pitiful. He really went dark, yeah. very dark with this role at times, figuratively and physically, because I don't really remember seeing his the whites of his eyes once in the entire film. That's interesting, actually. You know what? The rest of the cast definitely delivered, too. I mean, Andrew Garfield as Eduardo ended up being the most genuine and likable character yeah. throughout the entire spectacle. Absolutely. I agree entirely because, you know, on top of that, there was also this sort of palpable irony in the fact that the CEO of Napster is played by a musician. <laughs> I just think that's hilarious. You know what? Justin Timberlake did a great job as playing Sean Parker, but he was so disgusting. Now on the topic of music, <laughs> Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails did the soundtrack and you know what, hearing it in surround sound was kind of spine tingling. Oh my gosh, especially during that boat race with the Hall of the Mountain King getting more and more intense. Mm. Oh, that was, that was awesome. Oh, which leads me to the Winkle vibe. <laughs> oh my god, those twins were hilarious. Were awesome. And you know what, the two best lines in the movie both involved them. Oh my gosh, all in all, great story, great structure and great performances. But was it the true story behind Facebook? Hmm. We know he stole our idea. We know he lied to our faces for a month and a half. No, he never lied to our faces. Okay, he never saw our faces. Fine. He lied to our email accounts and he gave himself a 42 day head start because he knows what apparently you don't, which is that getting there first is everything. I'm a competitive racer, Div. I don't think you need to school me on the importance of getting there first. Thank you. All right. That was your father's lawyer. This is in house counsel. He's going to look at all this and if he thinks it's appropriate, he'll send a cease and desist letter. What's that going to do? What, do you want to hire an IP lawyer and sue him? No, I want to hire the Sopranos to beat the out of him with a hammer. We don't even have to do that. That's right. We can do that ourselves. I'm 6'5", 220, and there's two of me. Now, there's some speculation into the accuracy of the story. Since the movie was based on the book, Accidental Billionaires, that was written by a man whose only motivation was to tell the most interesting story that could be told. Now, does that mean all of it was true? Not really. But, you know, the fact that there was growing pains when mm. Facebook was being built that can't be denied. Exactly. Apparently, Accidental Billionaires was pitched to the author, Ben Mesrick, by a very bitter Eduardo Saverin, whose intention was to ruin Zuckerberg's reputation. Because he felt like he was getting owned like a noob on a hefty share of the company. Now, that whole story is pretty fascinating mm -hmm. because according to a collection of IMs and emails, 
Zuckerberg only partnered with Eduardo because he had lots of money and seemed to know a little something about business. And when the team moved to Palo Alto, Eduardo's three tasks in New York when he was doing his internship were to set up the company, get funding, and build a business model. Now, apparently he kind of screwed the pooch on that yeah. because he ran unauthorized ads for his other businesses on Facebook, leaving Zuckerberg pretty ticked off and desperate for funding to continue the business. Luckily, Sean Parker saves the day by bringing in the VC hookups, leaving Zuckerberg with the impression that Eduardo was expendable. So he did what any ruthless businessman would do. He cut him out of the company. Now, if all that's true, it makes a lot of sense that Eduardo would try to paint himself as the victim in a story like Accidental Billionaires, and therefore the movie as well. Now, did Mark actually mislead Eduardo, or was Eduardo just not paying attention when he signed his rights away? No one knows for certain. Either way, the book and the movie seem to be very much based on one jaded man's perspective of events. Exactly. Now, I'd say it's a fascinating tale about the youngest billionaire, but don't take everything in the movie for face value. It's not a documentary. It's a piece of fiction based on a grain of reality. Now, having said that, the movie itself gets five geeks out of five for the story because it has such brilliant structure and fantastic drama. It also gets five geeks out of five for performance because, wow, Jesse Eisenberg proves some serious acting chops. He's not just a Michael Sarah knockoff, he's better by a mile. But it only gets two geeks out of five for spectacle because ultimately it had a couple of beautiful shots but really, the Trent Reznor surround sound score is kind of what makes it almost worth spending your hard-earned cash at the theater. But at the very least, it's a must for rental. Which gives it a total of 12 geeks out of 15. Pretty good for a movie about geeks and software. So remember to keep your eyes right here for a look at all your geek movies and all your geek games from the two geeks who always have something to say. And you can keep up with all our past previews and reviews and have your say on yourgeeknews.com. I'm talking about taking the entire social experience of college and putting it online. The site got 2,200 hits within two hours. Thousand. 22,000. This idea is potentially worth millions of dollars. Millions! You stole our website. They're saying we stole the Facebook. I know what it said. So did we? A million dollars isn't cool. You know what's cool? A billion dollars. You're going to get left behind. It's moving faster than any of us ever imagined get it left would behind. Let's sue him in federal court. I can't wait to stand over your shoulder and watch you write us a check. If you guys were the inventors of Facebook, you'd have invented Facebook.